What's going on, everybody? Welcome to my first Fantasy Puck YouTube video of the season. It's Chris here bringing you guys the top five must-draft rookies for this year's fantasy hockey season. And oh boy, do we have some good ones on this list. Uh, but before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that we are going to be hammering you guys with content this year. So hit that subscribe button, check out our other channels, especially our Twitter, for all those juicy preseason lineup updates. Definitely go follow us over there. Don does a fantastic job with that, so make sure you hit that follow button for him. All right, here are a couple things that you need to remember when it comes to drafting rookies. Number one, and this is really the only thing that matters when it comes to rookies, is time on ice is the single most important thing. There is an incredible amount of talented rookies coming to the NHL this year. We don't know right now who's playing where. And it's difficult to put this together because of how volatile ice time can be with rookies. So it's important to understand that the most successful ones are going to have that huge amount of time on ice and that is getting a top six role. Perfect example was Michael Bunting from last year. He's still considered a rookie. I know there's a little bit of an asterisk there, but for him, the thing that allowed him to be so successful was the fact that he was playing with Matthew Smart the entire time. Next, Small sample. Every single stat that you're going to see in this video is a very, 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 very small sample or is not an NHL sample, which is going to bring me to my next point of don't reach on these guys. I understand it can be very enticing to grab a rookie if they get top six minutes, which is understandable. But you guys got to remember over the last three years, the highest point total by a rookie was Michael Bunting last year with only 63 points. And that was when scoring was much higher in the NHL compared to the previous two years. So don't reach on these guys. Understand that we don't know where their floor is quite yet, albeit there are some circumstances. Last year, Mort Sider was an incredible grab if you were able to get him. He was just an absolute fantasy stud, but for the most part, don't reach. These are going to be very high-risk, high-reward type players. Again, we don't know where their floor is. It's difficult to predict what they were going to be like in the NHL because of the fact that they're rookies. So treat them as such. You want to draft these guys in later in your draft when you have the majority of your team already established and you can afford to take a risk on some players. With all that being said, let's get right into the list. The first rookie we have for you guys is the first overall pick in the 2021 draft. Owen Power of the Buffalo Sabres. Over the eight games played in last season, he averaged 22 minutes and five seconds time on ice. 22 minutes as a 19-year-old. This guy has more cider written all over him. He's going to play a bunch in Buffalo due to their lacking defensive core. Hopefully you see some power play two time as well. And I just, he touches every category, guys. Like he could be more cider 2.0. I really hope that he continues to shoot the puck and nine blocks in eight games is, is good as well. So hopefully that'll continue. And hopefully his time on ice stays high going into next season. Next on our list is, no surprise again, Mason McTavish of the Anaheim Ducks. Had a fantastic stint there at the World Juniors. Nine games played last year with Anaheim. Three points, one on the power play, 12 shots, six blocks, and eight hits. This guy is going to be a category machine. He plays physical. He can chip in offensively. He likes to shoot the puck. He's going to see power play time. Like I'm very excited about Mason McTavish from a fantasy standpoint as well. Just again, because I think he's going to slot into a top six role in Anaheim. I think if he does play in the top six, it'll be on the wing as Ryan Strom and Trevor Zegras are ahead of him in terms of the depth chart. But he should, again, see power play time. And I think that also benefits McTavish a little bit, making him dual eligible at center and on the wing position. So definitely keep an eye on this guy. Like I said, I think he's going to be a categories machine. Even in bangers leagues, he's potentially somebody to keep an eye on as he had eight hits in nine games played. So we'll see what McTavish is like in the NHL, but definitely look to snag this guy later on in your drafts if you're in a categories league. I'm really excited for Matty Beniers next season if he can find himself in a top six role with the Seattle Kraken. They did not have by any means a good season last year, and they definitely lacked in scoring, but they went out and addressed that in the offseason, grabbing guys like Andre Burkowski and Oliver Bjorkstrand, as well as already solidified goal scorers like Jordan Everly and Jaden Schwartz. I think if Beniers can find himself in a top six role, he's going to see a lot of success. In 10 games played last season, he had nine points, likes to shoot the puck. He's hitting categories like blots and hits as well, and he's seeing power play time. So hopefully that kind of continues. The only issue is that Seattle does have a lot of centermen Yanni Gord played a little bit of center last year I don't know if that's going to continue Jared McCann played some center last year 
and Alexander Wenberg is obviously a center as well. So I think if Beniers can find himself in a top six role, he's going to see a lot of success, and he's definitely somebody that you should target, especially if he's playing with a guy like Oliver Bjorkstrand who can put the puck in the back of the net. Cole Perfetti only played 18 games last season before suffering an upper body injury, cutting his season short, which means he's still eligible to be a rookie going into next season. Seven points in 18 games is nothing to get excited over. I understand that. But you got to remember that Perfetti was only seeing around 14 minutes time on ice during those 18 games. He should continue to see power play time, and he's definitely slotting into a top six role with the Jets. I don't see guys like Mason Appleton beating him out of that spot, for example. And he's going to be the Michael Bunting of this year, I think. He's just going to be the beneficiary of playing alongside talented players like Shifley, Ehlers, Connor, Dubois even. Perfetti checks all the boxes for me. He's going to see an increase in time on ice. He's going to get power play time and he's going to be surrounded by talented players. So definitely make sure that you snag this guy when given the opportunity. This wouldn't be a top five rookie list without including a 26-year-old KHL Russian, and that's exactly who Andre Kuzmenko is, newly acquired by the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the pitch for landing him in Vancouver was that he was going to get power play one time, so expect him to see a little bit of value there, as well as he's going to play with a guy like Pedersen, Miller, or Horvat during even strength as well, so that's definitely something to be excited about going forward. I don't know if he's going to continue to produce at a point per game like he did in the KHL. It seems a little bit unlikely to me, but then again, that's what I thought about Kro Kaprizov, and look at him now. So if I eat my words on Kuzmenko, I will not be surprised, but definitely a good fantasy hockey option in the later rounds. He likes to shoot the puck, obviously. He can score goals. I looked at a little bit of his highlight tape. He seems like a pretty dynamic player. So definitely look to snag this guy in the later rounds just because of the value that he's going to get playing power play time and seeing some talented centermen. That's going to do it for our top five rookies this season. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Like I said, we got lots of content coming for you guys this season, as well as check out our Patreon as well. We've got some great premium options for you guys there as well. And make sure, make sure, make sure that you're following the Twitter. Lots of updates coming soon with preseason and everything. So stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video.